gamers all around the flat universe. I'm here to talk about a topic called the disconnect between pro players and viewers in AOE4 tournaments. Uh, this is something that if you watch my YouTube videos, I'm pretty sure I talked about this in a YouTube video, but if you watch me on Twitch, I 100% talked about this on Twitch a few times. I'll elaborate on what I mean, but uh, there is, in my opinion, a big disconnect in AOE4 tournaments in general and the viewers. So what I mean by that is the game that we play is not the game that you guys play. It's it's completely new, right? It's it's or completely different. Sorry. So for those that don't know, and I went over this, right? Uh, Golden League is the upcoming tournament that, that's happening, and every tournament or almost every tournament we've had so far, we've had like weird forced rules or. Uh, certain things like not allowed some of the things obviously pro players agree with some things pro players don't agree with but in general I feel like we rarely have tournaments that are just like AOE 4 you know and and we play it it's it, it always has to like have some kind of twist on it or something or we gotta have these wacky weird fucking maps uh, to create entertaining games <clears throat> and I always felt like like, for example, Red Bull was a great tournament, right? But uh, we were forced to play on the maps that were not for AoE 4. We were using a lot of AoE 2 maps, and the games were fucking weird. And at the end of the day, the tournament, for example, didn't produce a lot of good games because we were forced to play, like I said, this weird style of AoE 4 where it's just like feudal all ins all day. And a lot of these things are done, uh, from what I've been told, because lack of time or did, they didn't want the tournaments to be delayed and while i understand that if you add so many rules and so many things to the point where that's not aoe4 anymore what's the point you know what i mean um and by the way i don't mean to like bash the tournaments or um like people to bash the organizers or something like i still appreciate the tournaments and i appreciate the organizers but this is something that's kind of in my opinion should maybe stop at this point so there used to be a need for changing the, the the formats or banning certain things because we had bugs in the game we had issues in the game and and these were like ways to like fix that and now i feel like the game can run on its own you know like we don't need these made up rules to to play uh stuff so for example uh i'll use the the recent example because that's the tournament that's coming and the reason why I'm talking about this is because we just got another rule added. So uh, Golden League is a tournament that will span over eight weeks. Uh, the first two weeks is round one. And you are not allowed to build stone walls, keeps, and stone towers. Stone towers are the, the ones you put on stone walls. You are allowed keep landmarks. In round two, which is week three and four, you start with 12 workers from six and then you're allowed to build stone walls and keeps again and then third round which is fifth and sixth week top four sieves on each map are banned so players will basically vote like dry arabia let's say delhi abbasid mongol english whatever the strongest sieves and everyone votes uh and that's the result those sieves are not allowed to be played in that whole round for two weeks right on sp so each map will have its own Civ vetoes and then the last two weeks which is week seven and eight we go back to normal right we go back to normal you can build keeps it's six worker start no sieves are vetoed based on the win rate and this is the playoffs this is the top four so what is the problem with this in for me in my opinion the problem is we are having way too many made up rules way too many made up maps way too many made up mods and it's hard to keep track of um I'll, I'll speak from a player perspective and then i'll i'll kind of go to the to the disconnect part between the the viewers and the pro players and then i'm going to show you guys some posts as well how people have reacted to to this as well right so from player perspective whenever i play games there's always a new update for a map and then a guy can't download the map and then the maps are gone from the mods so we can't download them we can't find the map you go search for a map there's four different ones we didn't know which maps we we're playing on um and then it's like oh yeah we're, we updated a map and it's like 
it's hard to keep track of, right? What's where and who's what. Um, another problem is uh, I've, you know, since Red Bull, it's been three months and I've played AOE 4 the whole time. And then a month before this tournament or three weeks before the tournament, maybe it was a month, I don't know. We get told that we're having these rules, right? These extra rules. So now as a player, I feel like I could have just played another game. You know, I, I feel like I've kind of wasted my time playing because, um, and obviously I streamed yada yada. I'm just saying from a, from a, you know, actual practicing point of view. Because I played for t three months, right? And I'm in good form and yada yada. And then it's like, well, actually, the tournament you're going to be playing has nothing to do with what you played so far. So if I actually quit the game, took a break, came back, I wouldn't have missed out on anything. Because we're playing with new rules. Um, so that's kind of like, you know, um, another problem from player point of view is we cannot practice any of these rules on the ladder. Um, I cannot practice 12 villager start. I cannot practice the no keep, no stone walls on the ladder. I have to do custom games, which is, it's fine, but it's another thing that you have to do, right? All these things, like bit by bit, add up. Now, it kind of becomes worse because now we're practicing for the no stone wall keep uh, tournament, right? And then once that is over, second week, we have five days, five days before the next round starts, which is the 12 worker start. So we have five days to prepare for a completely new system, right? And some people might think like, oh, it's just six extra workers. It, it changes everything. You have to rethink all the saves on 10 different maps. We're getting two new maps for that round. And personally, no one will really have enough time to practice that. And you might say like, you can practice it now. It's like, yeah, but that round is like a month away. So it kind of doesn't make sense. And then five, after, five days after that, we go back to six workers and we have top four saves banned which again you need to practice like like you need to play the shit saves on on the maps uh which in five days with 10 different maps and 10 different saves and billion different matchups is going to be a struggle so all these things make it very difficult to to practice and to be like like i, I feel that tournaments are there to show who the best players are and and for me this just feels like we're just spinning the wheel and, and trying to you know make get some rng into the into the top tournaments if these kinds of rules were in in smaller tournaments i wouldn't mind but it's kind of weird right worst case scenario there is a chance that top players drop out and then the last playoffs stage the top four people get swept completely because it's back to normal. So there's no more of these shenanigans and stuff like that. So all these things is something that, like I said, it, it just too many changes, too many maps. And on top of that, by the way, we're getting a massive patch two days before week one. The recent patch that I covered with like the Delhi changes, the Abbasid changes, the trade changes, we're getting that as well on top of everything I've just talked about two days before round one starts. So, um, I under and, and we're getting three new maps in the tournament. And I understand, you know, you, you, maybe you wanna mix it up a little bit, uh, you know, wanna spice it up, but we already have the patch for that, which will already spice up things. And then we got the new maps, and then we got the new rules, and you know. So from player point of view, I personally don't like this. If uh, they said, hey, listen, the whole tournament is 12 worker start. Okay, let's, you know, let's try it out. 12 worker start whole tournament. But the fact that we're going back and forth makes it very hard to, to practice. And, you know, I've, I've heard the argument of pro players have to adapt. Uh, it, it's not about adapting. We are adapting already, like every day. The meta is changing. We have a new patch. We have new maps. That's already happening. Now, where does the disconnect come from? The disconnect comes from, uh, and, and this is very important, and th this was important in StarCraft, this is important in any game. The tournament we're about to play, um, 
Might be fun, by the way. I'm, I'm not saying... The games might be great. Um, the problem is... I'm going to be playing the, the round one, right? Of Snow, Stone, Walls, and Keeps. And then Joe in the chat is going to watch that. And his games look nothing like that. Joe doesn't play on those maps, first of all. Because they're all custom maps. Most of them. Second is we have unique rules that no one's ever played. Then we got the 12 villager star that no one's ever played. And a lot of the players, and, and you know, I watch other games and I also watch tournaments to try and learn a bit about the game. What is anyone going to learn from watching a 12 villager star? Nothing, right? It, it, there's no connection. And this is something I talked about in Red Bull or before Red Bull about the disconnect between player, uh, you know, players, fans, viewers, whatever you want to call them, and pro players because we had fully custom Apple, right? And I talked about it then, uh, and I talked with tournament organizers, I talked with Relic that it's very important that the ladder map pool and the tournament map pool is same slash very similar so that. If I play on Golden Heights um, and I do like a cool strategy or I lose to a cool strategy, Joe in the chat can be like, yo, that was so cool. I'm going to go on the ladder, right? I'm going to try that out as well. But instead, Joe goes on the ladder and gets Mongolian Heights, who, you know, we haven't played that shit in a year in tournaments. And we are not playing the same game, right? Now, the biggest issue. The biggest disconnect and the biggest problem, and I've seen this already on Discords, I've seen it on Reddit, I've seen it on my chat. Your average viewer, like you guys on Twitch, you know, you're, you're not your average viewer as in, you're more hardcore. Like, you watch live streams or you watch YouTube videos, you're more than your average Joe that just plays the game and it's like, oh, there's a tournament, let's watch it. Now, this is a problem. Um, the tournament starts. And Joe tunes in. Joe is gold and he tunes in. And he, you know, presses the button on his TV. He's like, I'm going to watch big tournament with pro players. And then he's like, why are they not building keeps? Why are they not building stone walls? And this is a question that will get repeated in the stream chat billion times. Because people don't keep up with these things, right? To be honest, it was hard for me to keep up with all the changes and, and maps and stuff that was happening to the point where I had discussions with pro players and it's like, oh, aren't we allowed to do this? Oh, no, you, you can't. You can do this, but not that. And we are like into this. You know, we're reading, we're watching, we're playing. Now imagine your average viewer tuning in. They're going to have no fucking clue what's happening, right? But let's say, you know, you, you, you repeat it enough times, you repeat it 30 times and then... They're going to get it, right? Two weeks are over. Amazing. Everyone everyone understands, right? Two weeks end. Everyone understands. No keeps, no stonewalls. Joe tunes in third week. 12 villagers. Okay, now they start with 12 villagers. That's pretty easy to see, right? Why are they building keeps? Wait, they're building stonewalls as well. And then the chat will be question marking, why are they building keeps? Because again, people don't keep track of these things, right? A lot of people just tune in, watch some games and go offline. And this is the, the, the disconnect and the issues that will come out of this. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, people will be so fucking confused which round we're on, which week we're on, what the players are allowed to do. And in general, what strategies are allowed? Not to mention, we're also getting different maps from round to round, right? So people are going to be like, why is there no more this map? Why is there no more that map? And again, if they wanted to do one rule throughout the whole thing, that's fine. But changing this much is something I dislike personally. Uh, there was a lot of talks about adding extra rules about like banning uh, uh the trade trick and 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 i i just said like guys i to be honest as a player i play multiple tournaments and i had a moment recently where uh i played a show match 
and I genuinely didn't know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do because every tournament has different rules as well. I genuinely did. I tapped in the middle of the game to, to see if I can do something or if I can't do it. And uh, I, I don't think I need to explain why that's a problem. Also, tur different tournaments use different maps. Different tournaments use different versions of the maps. Some maps have trade, some maps don't have trade, but it's the same map. Yeah. And then at the end of it all, the playoffs are normal. Which to me makes no sense, right? Why are we reverting back to normal? Like we're qualifying players for the top four with these weird rules. And then in the top four, it's like up oh, back to normal. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. And I, I do think, and I'm speaking this by the way, like I compete, I'm a player, I'll adapt, right? That's, I'm not complaining about that. I've practiced, I've adapted, I'm all good. The bigger concern is, like I said, the disconnect between the pro players and the viewers. It's going to be extremely hard to keep track of what the players can do, who's doing what, why are they not building this, why are they not building that. And um, I don't personally think that's good for the game. I think the tournaments in general, the streams, whatever, should be as close to ladder what everyone is playing as possible, right? I'm not saying we should always use ladder map pool for tournaments, but we should, you know, try to have some kind of similarity. So anyway, uh, the reason why I made this video is I wanted to talk about that, but also we had another rule change. So the rule change that we got, and I've been practicing for two weeks, and I've practiced uh, uh, boom sieves, aka sieves that go into the late game. And uh, because you can't build keeps, you can't build stone walls. I, I'm not saying I found out about this strategy, but I have practiced a strategy that basically uh, allows you to boom up with like HRE, China, whatever, and then build bombard towers to secure the map. So I've been doing this for two weeks. It's five days until the tournament starts. Uh, well, the qualifiers, uh, I guess 11, 12 days until the, the my round one starts. And I've been practicing that, that was my style. And then we got a new rule where every weapon in placement cost is doubled. So again, I practiced a strategy and now that strategy is deemed like it's delaying the game or whatever. And that's also nerfed. So now bomber emplacement, instead of costing 300 on a tower, they cost 600. The bonus HP on a tower from that gives you 1000 health doesn't cost 100, it costs 200. Sprinkled upgrade costs 250 stone. And again, if this was set from the start, that's fine. But this is changed again. And... I, like... Too many changes! Like, too many rules, too many changes. And what I dislike about this the most is the reason why stone walls and keeps were, you know, uh, banned is because they wanted the games to be shorter. So they did this, right? They wanted the games to be shorter. So it's like, oh, if there's no stone walls, no keeps, we'll have shorter games. The funny thing is, the ironic thing, uh, is that the exact opposite happened. Because there was no keeps and no stone walls, you couldn't move out. Because if you move out, you lose everything in your base. So the games, uh, usually the games were shorter on average, but the ones that did go long went for much longer because you couldn't move out on the map. And the reason why this change is being made is because of that. Because of the bombard towers in the late game are now further delaying the game. And the reason I dislike this is because this was brought up by a player or two or three. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to name names. They complain about it. They say the games are too long, so it got nerfed. And I based my style on that, and now that's nerfed. So it's like... 
can I request that uh, people can't attack me for 30 minutes now? Like, what's the deal with that? And especially changing it again so soon before the tournament? It, it just sucks. Like, you made the rules, stick with them. Don't fucking change them again, you know? And I've said this, and I said it's ridiculous that we're getting another rule change implemented. Because, again, why the fuck have I been practicing? For what? So basically what I did is, like, I have a list of all the maps and all the matchups and yada yada. And I'll have to redo and retry a lot of the maps and a lot of the sieves because of this change. Which, by the way, let's be honest, any change, any balance change, any nerf, any buff in the game, any rule change will benefit some players. And some players it won't. And any player that loves all inning in feudal or, you know, just going all out obviously benefits uh, from this in round one. Yeah, anyway. Just so I don't go around and repeat myself like I usually love to do. Uh, there's been two Reddit threads, and this is the like community's thoughts, and, and this was posted... Uh, one was 13 hours ago, and the other one was 17 hours ago. One was, how are you guys feeling about the, uh, about the Stonewall tournament? And this one is good, uh, Golden League 2 feels. Am I the only scrub here that's just super excited to see uh, uh, for HCTV to be, to be back with all their awesome teams and casters? I'm sure everything else will work out just fine. Community molding about Stonewall's rules. No keep strange maps so soon after the patch. Me excited about EGCT being back. Now, with that being said, again, I, I, I'm going to repeat it once again. I appreciate EGCTV. They're hosting tournaments and they're doing a great job uh, with those tournaments. I think the, the, the production is good. All that is fine. Um, this doesn't mean that, that I hate him or that I'm not excited for Golden League. I'm not asking for anything to be changed right now, except to stop adding more rules and for future tournaments, maybe to, you know, just give feedback on that. So with that being said, let's take a look. I think making all those specials for main tournament is questionable. I hope the next S tier tournament is more competitive. Gimmicks be belong into smaller tournaments that are purely for entertainment. That said, I'll still watch of it either way. And this is something that A to B, A to Z, I agree with. You know, I, I agree with this. I think gimmicks belong into smaller tournaments, more fun tournaments. I hope the next S tier term is more competitive. And, um, you know, that being said, I will play it and I will watch it either way. Um... I totally agree. As somebody who actively plays the game, this is diminishing my enjoyment for the tournament because the players basically aren't playing the same game I'm playing. Which is what I talked about earlier. I watch competitive play because uh, I enjoy what strategies the top players are using and then integrate that into my own play. I swear I did not... I did not <laughs> repeat this comment because it sounds like it's literally what I said earlier. I can't do that with significant rule changes like no keeps, walls, and 12 villager starts. And the reason I know this, because in the past, people have complained about this already. I don't understand why it was necessarily either. I could understand adding additional rules if the meta was stagnant and all the games were playing out the same. 100% agree. 100% agree. If we were um, a year and we have no patches, you know, nothing happened. We we're playing for a year, even six months. If nothing's happening, um, no patches, no changes, it's kind of getting stale, like everyone knows which save is good. And then you do a term like this, thumbs up. I don't mind it. I think it's good to spice things up. Whether it's a balance change or if there's no balance changes, it's spicy with a tournament. But again, we're getting a massive patch two days before the tournament starts. But that's not the case. We're getting a huge patch during this tournament, which will shake up the meta. And even though that it's been a while since the last one on a big tournament, the meta has changed. Speaking of game rules, I feel like we're going to start will play out the same as standard six villager, but skipping the first two minutes of the game. That is not how that uh, works because uh, economy in RTS games has exponential growth, meaning the more villagers you have, the harder your economy will boom. And certain civs will simply be better. For example, HRE right now starts with six villagers in a prelate. By starting with 12 villagers in a prelate, the prelate can fully uh, juice up eight villagers from the get-go. So H range is simply better, right? Uh, also, saves like Delhi will be 
completely in the shitter. Which, by the way, Delhi in round one can't build keeps. Delhi is getting a change where keeps can produce villagers a lot easier. So in round one, Delhi is fucked because they can't produce keeps, which is a very big thing for Delhi. Round two, we're starting with 12 villagers, which is also going to fuck Delhi because um, you're basically going to be reaching feudal and castle a lot quicker. And Delhi upgrades are free and they take time to complete. So by narrowing that time, you are effectively nerfing Delhi in a big way. Not just one upgrade, all upgrades. Um, so I don't think we will see much Delhi in round one or round two, uh, which is first four weeks of the tournament. And that's assuming that the third week doesn't have Delhi banned on maps. So this is not really correct because uh, stuff like Mongol Tower rushing will will not be a thing. Um, probably men at arm rushing won't be a thing because, or it it might be a thing where you just rally men at arms because you have so many villagers you can fully support the production while aging up. And I haven't tried twelve villager start. But in theory, the way this should work is straight to castle and just massy knights. In theory, I might be wrong. Um, tower rushes will be harder to pull off and docks won't scale as hard, which is a good point. The question is, will you even go for docks? Maybe on like Mediterranean, but Mediterranean isn't in the map pool. So the question is if you're even going to make docks on the maps that have water. Sheep will run out faster, idle time while uh, scouting could happen, so other food sources will be taken, barbecue rushes will be faster, and English will have more efficient five villager pull, uh, five villager harassing. That's actually a good point. This could nerf Delhi as there is less dark age, that's what I just said. Uh, China will, less gold, will get less gold tax before aging up, archers will hit in the field uh, faster, making spiel, spears less ideal to build. English lose out on most the benefit of the early men at arm. The amount of time Mongols can build horsemen before others shrink too. Um, a lot of these seem ideal, but there's so much choice removed by this. Uh, I'd find new ways to surprise people, but a lot of meta would be lost. And it will be. It is what it is. Why don't they just force Mongol mirrors in this tournament? See if that's the gameplay they want all civs to play. Uh, I mean... Uh, <laughs> this is a funny comment because I don't think you'll be seeing any Mongol. Uh, round one, um, obviously you can't make keeps, you can't make song walls. Which save does this benefit the most? Mongols. So Mongol will probably be banned most of the round one, I would imagine. So I don't think you'll be seeing Mongols in general. There are bans, so if Mongols are OP, we won't be seeing Mongols at all. Yep, there it is. Banning keeps will probably slow down games a lot because you can't really send out army without opening your eco traits, which is funny and ironic because that's what they wanted to. That's why they did the changes to prevent that. GL1 also had creative formats and there wasn't nearly as much backlash, if there was any backlash at all. In fact, it was a very well received from what I remember. It's a bit sad that someone not liking the rules can influence this much how the term is perceived by fans. Golden League 1? Can someone in the chat type the rules? What Golden League 1 had? Do you guys remember from top of, from top of your head? So this is an unfair comparison. Uh, round one was called Open Battlefield. And with Open Battlefield, the, the only maps that were allowed to be played are open maps. It was like Dry Arabia, Lipani, uh, maps like that. It was only four maps, High View and something else. So the reason why that would, did not receive as much backlash was because that didn't really change the game, okay? We played Dry Arabia, we played Lipani, we played uh, High View, which is the same thing that Joe was playing on the ladder, and we played the same sieves that the Joe was playing on the ladder, okay? So comparing that with the 12 villager start and the no stone walls, no keeps is just disingenuous completely, right? Round two was the top three sieves were vetoed, which we're having it now again, which I don't mind because again, even if you veto top three, top four sieves, the rest of the gameplay you will see is the same thing that the viewers are playing. It's nothing new, nothing weird. That's it. You will just have, you know, maybe not top three best sieves on the map, but you'll have fourth, fifth best sieve on the map, which is fine. And then the last one was, um, the last one was exclusive civilizations. Player will draft Players will draft a pool of civilizations they must play, double elimination. 
And this was when, uh, and I think this was the first tournament, and after uh, Red Bull used this format, where you didn't pick... So, until that moment, if I pick Mongol, you can pick Mongol. If I, like, ban something, you can ban it as well. But in this specific round, if I pick Mongols, the enemy cannot pick Mongols. I, like, it's, it's like, a, each player can only have one of those, right? Or it, it was a unique pick. So if I pick Mongol, French, Rus, the opponent had to pick like HRE, China, Abbasid, Delhi, and so on and so forth. Which again, uh, was fine, and people didn't mind it, and there was no backlash, because that did not change the game in any way. Um, that did not change the gameplay, I didn't need to download mods for this, it was just, you had to kind of think and strategize and prepare which sieves you're gonna pick first, which sieves you're gonna ban first. Because what you could also do is you could pick a sieve in order for your opponent not to get it, right? So if you if you knew which sieves your opponent was playing, you could potentially pick if their French was the best. You can, for example, veto Mongo and first pick French so they can't take French. So basically, there was no mirrors in this round. And the reason why there was no backlash was because once those things are done, the games are normal, right? The games are normal. Nothing's changed. And nobody minded that. Nobody minded that, right? And everyone played it. Uh, players needed to adjust. Players needed to practice the drafting, practice the weird saves on the new maps. And he's right. Nobody complained about it. There was no backlash. Um... Hopefully, this TV will still dare to come up with these new ideas in the future. Personally, I join this kind of event and will watch from start to the end. Again, people will watch from start to the end either way. That's not really the point. Because um, I think right now, Nomad has more uh, or has less of a disconnect than the tournament we're about to have. Because most of you guys have either watched Nomad or even played Nomad. And that's a wild one, right? So, again, like, comments like this is just, it's an overreaction. Like, you can have, like, I, I can express my dislike to the format without people, like, going off on the, the other end where it's like, the game's dying, that, you know, everything's dead, you know, whatever. Um, I, I do think that these kinds of things are important to talk about. Um... Because if nothing is said, then we'll have next tournaments where I gotta play upside down. You know what I mean? Uh, with, you know, someone punching me in the balls because it's more entertaining. It's like, well... <clears throat> so this is the second thread. How are you guys feeling about this No Keeps Stonewalls tournament? So this one is like specifically... The other one was kind of like a meme determined discussion. This one is specifically, um, specifically a thread for it. For round one. Um... I would watch that, no cap. There it is. Uh, I've been watching some serious practice for this tournament. Originally, I have to say I was intrigued by the idea. I was wondering what interesting play would come out of not being able to hunker down and send raids, counter raids. However, so far, it feels like all the games are very similar and quite frankly boring. These matches look uh, to boil down to building walls and funneling the most units down one path until someone breaks. That is because you cannot raid. If you don't have stone walls and keeps, you cannot go around and raid because the enemy will push through the middle and, and fuck you right up. There's a bit of raiding just because you can't have any defending keeps. You can't really, uh, you really have to keep your units focused in one place. What are your thoughts? I've been playing RTS games since 1999. I think it's ridiculous to remove slash ban the use of anything that is a part of the game. These types of games are about uh, adapting to the battlefield. If your opponent is throwing up keeps, you have to change gears and counter them. It's one giant rock, paper, scissor game. I don't know about that everything oh he means like every yeah okay everything as a counter utilize the entire civilization's capabilities this prompts for bad play style and sore losers because the pros don't play like that outsmarting my opponent every way possible is the reason i enjoy these games i don't believe anything is cheap or unfair if the enemy refuses to acknowledge or deal with the problem they pay for it uh, walls and keeps are part of the balance concept for all civs even mongols who have other advantages to make up for their lack of walls. Simply removing that just forces faster games is short-sighted and nonsensical in my opinion. 
it won't help uh, raise viewer numbers because most who would want to watch the games do this because they're already interested in the game and understand what's happening to a certain degree. Correct. No one will start watching AOE4 because we got these nuts rules. If anything... <clears throat> anyway. They might rather be excited about a long game bef between their favorite players. Uh, those who don't won't watch in the first place. Force the games to be over sooner won't raise their numbers much, I think. And again, it's interesting to try a game in different ways. I agree with that. I just don't think that the biggest tournament we're having at the start of this year is the place for that. But I do agree we should try different systems. 100% agree. Uh, kind of huge nerf to English, French, and Delhi, and a buff to Rus. No other thoughts as I haven't seen practice matches. <laughs> tournament orgasm, Mongol mains. And tournament is playing on a new patch. Keeps and defense is going to be a big part of new Delhi identity. That's what I mentioned, and so Delhi will not be played. Which, you know, Delhi is getting cool changes with elephants and all that. Well, check W. Seems like tower spam just replaced keeps and late game still turns into very similar stalemates. It's a bit different, but doesn't seem very promising. We'll see. Which again is why we've received a double uh, stone cost on the towers now. The stone will change. Uh, stone will rule made sense at the start when they were OP. In general, though, I'm not a fan of tournaments having their own sets of rules compared to the latter. Even stone's walls in H2 these days aren't the same uh, force they used to be even if I'm still not a fan of them. They have a counter like anything else uh, with faster in, uh, siege engineering and cheaper rams. It would be interesting to see how the game would work if stone walls were allowed in feudal because right now we don't have maps like mountain pass, like french pass in tournaments, maps that are easily wallable so maybe this would be possible but they might still be strong i don't know because i generally haven't seen stone walls in h2 in a while like again these kinds of comments are are not necessary uh we've seen quite a lot of bomber towers as a replacement of keeps to secure an area people counter attack less too simply because you can't really rely on keeps to gain a defender's advantage with your remaining defending army if you split your army main army so you can attack you lose so these games generally devolve into big army versus big army along the central line and more turtling because you simply can't move out without leaving your base exposed because you have fewer defensive options. It's funny to see the format that was intended to discourage turtling accomplishing the exact opposite. Anyway, I heard the intent to increase the stone cost of bombard emplacements in order to uh, curtail the bomber spam. It will probably fail uh, because people build the towers because it's the next best things after keeps are done. Like... What am I supposed to make? You know what I mean? People are still gonna make stone towers. People are still gonna make bomber towers. So yeah, that won't stop. In the pre this newest change, you would basically make bomber towers everywhere in the late game. Everyone was doing it, not, not just me. The funny thing is, you always had like extra stone on the map because there's like so much stone and you're not really using it. And even though they double the cost, technically, yeah, it will weaken the towers, but there still will be mass towers. And except now I'm going to move out of my base even less because when I make a bombard tower, that bitch is fucking 800 stone, by the way. So 600 stone for the bombard replacement and 200 for the bonus HP. You think I'm going to go raid and risk losing a literal keep? That has no health? Of course not. You're gonna fucking camp even more and make sure the towers stay alive. Because they're extremely important. That's just what's gonna happen. And you will still have enough stone to uh, to build bomber towers. Obviously not as many, but it will happen. So another change they just made today, by the way, on top of the doubling the thing. The arrow slits also were doubled to 100 stone. And now that's reverted. So now the arrow slits are 50 stone. The Springle Towers went from 125 to 250, and the Bombard went from 300 to 600, and the the bonus HP went from 100 to 200. I mean, let, let's not even dive into the fact that some civs have keeps as their landmarks and some don't. Which is another, uh, yeah, yep, cock. 
What is the original idea of this? Uh, it's to make the games faster, but the exact opposite happened. The games are somehow, if they reach that point, they're going longer. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I I don't I I generally wanna like have a, a a normal like conversation and 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 discuss this because. I'm not expecting, you know, once again, uh, you know, I'm a streamer, pro player, I play this game a lot. I've adapted for round one. I don't think I'll have enough time to adapt to round two and round three. So I might lose early, I might not, we'll see. But, you know, the tournament organizers are the ones who make the rules and I'm a player and, you know, when you sign up, you accept those things. So not much to say there, right? I'm not expecting the rules to be changed or something because the last thing I would want is the rules to be changed again. Um, I just hope that in future this is kind of taken in consideration with making a tournament because for me, right, I, I used to play StarCraft competitively. I was a starter for a while. I played other games as well competitively um, or at high level. Maybe I wasn't, you know, pro player in them. But in my opinion, and of course this is something that people can can disagree with, um, you know, some viewers see as, you know, tournaments just something entertaining and, and you know, whatever, just make it as entertaining as possible. In my opinion, uh, for RTS games at least, I think that the tournaments are there to figure out and find out who the best players are. And you are not going to find out who the best players are by adding a randomness to it and changing the game in an unnatural way. That's kind of my conclusion. I'm still going to play the tournament. If I lose and I drop out, I'm still going to watch the tournament. Nothing changes. And I hope that everyone, uh, you know, will follow the tournament and will watch the tournament as well. Uh, because I do think at the end of the day, it will be fun to watch. We'll see how fun it will be to play. I can't say yet because I, uh, I haven't played yet. Tournaments are always for entertainment first. That's how they get viewers. Uh, viewership investors get money. True. Uh, but that is that is assuming that making these rules will gain more viewership. And I don't think that's the case. I don't, I don't think you will gain viewers either way, right? You're not going to gain viewers by changing or keeping the normal rules. Uh, I think one of the guys that commented on that thread kind of nailed it. If, it, if the changes are for entertainment purposes and you come to watch a tournament, you're coming to watch a tournament with the expectation of watching the same thing you're playing, which means you like the game, right? So if you already like the game and you're there to watch, then who is getting attracted as a new viewer or, or gaining viewership, right? Because people that want to watch the tournament are already, uh, are already there. New viewers, uh, if they like the new rules, they can play it. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the funniest part. That's the funny. That's a good point. That's a good point. So imagine the situation where we play the twelve villager or no stone walls, no keeps, and people love it, right? People love it. They're like, oh my god, then they can't play it <laughs> because you can't go on the ladder and play it. You have to play custom games. And by the way, every, uh, I, I think everyone, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I haven't spoken for uh, every pro player. I didn't say every pro player hates this. I'm sure some enjoy it, some dislike it, some don't mind it. I think everyone has their own opinion. Um, and I think that's fine, right? At the end of the day, uh, you know, if we're going to make up rules uh, and we got to keep making up rules, I would love to have one rule that favors me. Let's all start at Imperial with the map split in half and we start with 200 supply. Why not? You know? Let's play the late game. That makes the game shorter. Ah! Hey! There it is! That, I mean, that would be short games, wouldn't it? Because you're straight into Imperial. Already boomed up, you just gotta fight. <clears throat> 12 villagers are cool at least. It's similar to what they did with Legacy. A 12 villager start in StarCraft uh, was terrible for the game. IMO. And I was one of the people who was very much for it when initially was announced. That's it. I'm going to wrap up the discussion and the video here. 
I think uh, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Let me know what you think. We're gonna discuss it now in Twitch chat, YouTube gamers. Let me know what you think. Again, guys, I I, I did not make this or talk about this to like kill the hype or something. The tournament is still gonna be great. This is a discussion that that you know I've, I'm trying to open up for the future. And obviously, I, I don't think I need to say this, but I'll say it anyway. I don't think anyone should mold at EGCTV, far from that. They're hosting tournaments for a long time now, and all the tournaments that they've had were fun. Some are different, some are not. That's it. If you're watching on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Check me out on Twitch. I'm probably streaming live right now. And for the Twitch gamers, let's keep going.